what's up i'm daniel this is east of awesome and today i want to print my latest uh, linocut the vddm print and before we can do that i would like to make a few changes to my printing press here so this is a printing press that i transformed from an old washing ringer i made a video about that a while ago and i really like working with it but i have a few uh, ideas on how i can improve it some of it might be relevant only for my specific setup here but i think a lot of it will translate to other printing presses and specifically setting it up for lino cut prints so let's quickly get over how I have it set up now and then we can see what we can change about that. Um, I've got one uh, printing blanket here and the printing bed I have a rather small one and that sits on top of the plate from the ringer here. I made it specifically quite small so that I could just um, perfectly print this size here this is an a4 sized print it is a little bit small but i made it this way so that i could just store it like this fold it over and then um, put it on the side here and it doesn't take up too much space so i would like to make a printing bed that is the full width here and also longer because storing the printing blanket here on the press is not recommended because obviously we have pressure here and it makes an, with time it can make an indent in the felt itself and then it uh, doesn't do its purpose of distributing the weight evenly also having this here all the time is a perfect cat sleeping place and uh, they they like this felt to to sit on it and get it hairy and we don't want that either on our printing surface that should be should stay clean so long story short the sensible thing to do is after printing just um, taking the blankets out and I can as well just take the um, printing bed out itself and store it together with the blankets so uh, no real no reason to have it small like this sometimes if i'm uh, printing very small postcards or something then this might come in handy it even fits this way yes so i will definitely keep this store it together for um, smaller prints let's quickly have a look down in the cellar where the where all the wood lives look good it is also long enough so perfect too much old wood nah. so let's see we want 54 millimeter centimeters and this is 60 although I'm a big proponent of using this Japanese Ryoba saw for everything. A straight, really long cut, there is a tool that's better for that. And it is a, a new tool that I have and it makes total sense to use it here, so I will do that. 54 centimeters and then I need to always give it two centimeters extra here so let's go with 52 use this as a guide recently went to the flea market and found this clamp uh, bought it for two bucks and looks awesome i don't know but 
these old cast iron tools and the with these with this old wood I definitely think they have a very nice appeal much better than these modern ones okay well, that's why you always have two batteries Definitely quicker than using the hand saw. And I mean, come on, it's so small, it nearly counts as a hand tool, I think. Nothing wrong with using big power tools, but um, I feel like you have enough people building stuff that have access to big power tools. Um, that you can watch, but um, not so much people that don't have the space or the access to the big power tools that build cool stuff with just the hand tools and um, if you have a, just a small space then um, that's often the only option you have and you can do awesome stuff Alright, so next step, we have the base plate here. Now what I would like to do is add a, a transparent layer on top, um, which makes it easier to clean and where I can lay reference sheets below. I've seen that somewhere, yeah, I try to link. There are transparent mats for dining tables or so, but I found this thing here laying around here. This is a uh, a mat um, to protect the floor where you roll with your chair. That's perfect, I think. So let's try this. Trying to see, to decide which side is in better condition. I think this one. But I think the monitor will hold it. Yeah, that, that works. So this is quite a hard plastic and I think it might splinter, so let's put something over our eyes. And if we add it, we can also get those. So now we need to figure out which side where to face the rough side here. But I think facing the rough side to the bottom so it doesn't move that way here. Probably a good idea. But then of course this moves. We'll try. Will they move together inside the press? Looks good. Lay something on here and we see it perfectly. Awesome! Let's take this out as a reference again and then we can um, look after the printing blankets. So yesterday I went into the city to check out what I can find and so what I have here are three blankets of different thickness 
which is the amount that you typically use for etchings and you don't really need as far as I know for Linocut but we will try it out and I would also like to set it up in a way that I can uh, do etchings in the future if I want to. So we have the thinnest one which is in typical etchings where you soak the paper in water which uh, so this is to get the moisture to catch it the thick one to distribute the weight and the third one um, is for magical purposes that no one knows about but it is important nonetheless so typically you use um, real wool felt blankets and if you buy them specifically for printing then they are really expensive this is just synthetic felt and I think it will work for my purposes at least. Feel free to tell me if it makes sense to spend, I don't know, for this three pieces of felt. I paid um, 40 euros about for all three of them and I think that, that wouldn't even buy me one blanket half of the size that I need. About. I, I didn't research the prices before, but I know that I did look into it when I originally built the press to see if I want to order something like that. And then I came to the conclusion that I don't want to do that. Now at least. Cutting. All three of them together, they are already quite thick. Interested to see if the distance here will be enough for all of them. Can we cut all of them? Yes, we can. Printmaking it has to hurt sometimes. Ow! This is for future reference. Oh, there it is. So this is one millimeter, this is three, and this is two and a half. So each one of them is about um, half the thickness that I think is recommended, but we will see. Let's also round these edges a little bit if we can. Now, one last thing, I want to have runners that are the height of the linoleum. So if we put our lino block here and paper, and we put a piece of paper on top, then the, when the the roller where the pressure is comes it when it just hits the edge it is possible that it pushes the paper a little bit um, and that can make it not so clear print so what we want is to have it always on the to have it already on the height of the linoleum and for that we want a strip of linoleum on each side that is the same thickness that we use. So let's see what we have. So we have one older piece of linoleum left, one big piece that's 
that's A2. And that's the a size that I could print with this plate because yeah I would get it through but we will cut these to get these strips that we want. If we have this here then what do we have left? Then we would have 10 centimeters so this strip can be five centimeters. This is 60, we want 90, yes, yeah, so it's exactly three strips that we need. I'm cutting here without a cutting mat at the bottom because I'm not cutting through, because I'm going to break the linoleum here after cutting it a little bit. And then we can just cut through the backing of the linoleum this way. One. a little bit of a glue now oh, we got our wood plate we got the clear mat we have the runners and we have our felts here. Let's see now if we can get this complete thing here inside the press and if it runs through. It didn't grab the felt. Okay, I think we need to stagger all of this a little bit. Maybe like that. And then if I just get the pressure out here. Okay. Ah, here is the problem. So this piece here of metal needs to go up there. And it doesn't on both sides. Can I get this out of here? Not that easily. Ah, that's unfortunate, but we can manage it. So we need to get the whole top part away. And that's one thing that I didn't do the first time when I took most of this thing apart to clean it. Considering how old those are, they come off quite easily. So and what we need to do now is cut this piece short here. <laughs> up here easily on both sides. That's good. Uh, 
This feels promising this time. No, yes. So this goes down here, spreads the pressure evenly to both sides. And if we now put a piece of lino here, we have the same height everywhere and it should go down smoothly. And then if we increase the pressure, all right, looks good so far. So now comes the interesting part. We can start printing. What's with the magnets? Ah, not strong enough for all three of them. If that's two, two works. Even here. Ah, that's perfect. Look at that. So we store this here. Maybe we can even adjust it. Yes. Look. Nice. So if we make just a little handle. How about that? As a handle. Might work. Carved this some time ago and I don't know why, but I remember that the wood was too hard and it wasn't really fun. So I left it unfinished as a little handle. So it's flush here. Starch printing. 